It's Travel Michigan back for another week and happy to have you with us as well. And we're going to head up to the Alpena area to start today's program. And I got to tell you, you're going to love to hear about this place. I love this place and in the entire Alpena area. So let's find out what's happening up at the National, actually the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, where there's a, a big festival about ready to kick off. And to tell us all about that, let me introduce you to Jean Bauer. She is the Special Events Coordinator up at the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Jean, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's let's talk about the sanctuary first. Um, I know you've been there for a few years now, uh, but uh, there are some people who probably have no idea uh, what the sanctuary is, uh, what you do there, where are you, and uh, and why it's there. Sure. Um, Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary was designated in October of 2000. Um, The area contains a nationally significant collection of shipwrecks. Um, that span over two centuries of Great Lakes shipping history. Um, we cover 448 square miles out in Lake Huron, mm. near Alpena, Michigan. So this is, is basically a protected area um, where um, it's believed that because of all those shipwrecks and kind of a unique number of shipwrecks, that um, they wanted to protect them to make sure divers didn't uh, take off with uh, some of that, uh, the, uh, the ships that are down there as well. That's correct. And we also um, promote... Um, access. So we do put mooring buoys out every year to make it easier for the divers to get to the sites. Um, and those coordinates for those shipwrecks can all be found on our website. Yeah. So it, it prevents people from damaging the wrecks by dragging anchors and such to try to find them. We mark them so that they're able to access them. Well, and people might be surprised, depending on whose numbers you believe. I've heard anywhere from 3,000 to 11,000 shipwrecks in the Great Lakes and uh, numbers all in between. But uh, there are several that, that you can dive or um, uh, experience in, in one way or another there at uh, Thunder Bay just off of Alpena. That's correct. Um, they're all different uh, depths. So some you can see from kayaks, snorkeling. We have a glass bottom boat. You can come tour um, and see the shipwrecks that way or, of course, diving. And I believe they have about 23 mooring buoys out there right now on 23 different wreck sites. Wow. Um, but there are even more shipwrecks out there than that. That's just what we have marked at the current time. That's cool. Well, it really is a great opportunity because there aren't many places in the world where you can see shipwrecks this clearly. The Great Lakes uh, water is, uh, at least in that area, is considered uh, pretty clear, pretty cold. So mm-hmm. there's not a lot of um, a problem with viewing. And because it's fresh water, uh, again, you get to see things that uh, don't have all those creepy crawlies growing on them after all those years. Exactly. And the salt water of the oceans um, damages the shipwrecks, whereas the cold, clean water of Mm -hmm. um, Lake Huron really protects them and keeps them pristine and looking the way they were when they were sailing above the water. So well, it is pretty neat. If you haven't been here, you should come and visit. And we have, if you don't want to get wet, you can come to our visitor center. We have videos. We have, you know, lots of exhibits that explain what we do and show pictures of the shipwrecks. It's pretty amazing. Well, that's kind of me. You know, I grew up here in, in Michigan, uh, love the water, but uh, as, I, as I've as i been uh, known to, to admit, I don't like to get my ears wet, so I, I actually don't yeah. like to go underwater. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so if you don't want to go underwater and do a little diving there, there are ways to to experience uh, you know all that is there just by simply going to the sanctuary itself. You're going to enjoy it. It's a uh, it's a very cool thing. Exactly. And our summer hours are nine to five, and the um, exhibits are completely free. So there's no charge. Um, you can just come on in and and visit the exhibits, and then if you want to do the glass bottom boat, there is a charge for that. But that's cool. Everything else is is free. All right, it's good. Well, of yeah. course, um, with all that uh, kind of maritime um, uh, heritage there, uh, I guess it's uh, obvious why you're having a big Thunder Bay Maritime Festival coming up on the fourth of July. Why don't you tell us what uh, people can expect? Sure, um, that is on the fourth of July from ten a.m. to six p.m. And yeah, that is, again, another free event. We like to try to just get out there and um, provide history and fun things for our community to do to help get our message out. Um, so we do have entertainment all day long. There are um, a few different um, musical groups. The Tongue Family Band, which has been here a few times, um, is a string band, and it's a family. So, and they are originally from the Alpena area and now live over in Traverse City, and so we enjoy having them come back to perform. And they haven't been here for a few years. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have Hips and Rico, hmm. and they are also from the Traverse City area, and they are um, blues and jazz, and they 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 were a big hit. We had them last year, and so we invited them back again this year to perform. Fun. 
Yeah. Also is um, the Grand Traverse Pipe and Drums. I don't know if you um, are familiar with them, but that's also a really great group. They're going to be marching in the parade, and then they'll come down here and put on a performance in our big tent as well. So they'll be in the uh, Alpena Parade, 4th of July Parade, yeah. and then come on over to perform for yeah. your guest as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that type of music. That's fun. Yeah. So, again, we have music going all day long. Um, Gino Pacor, who is a, a storyteller, uh, he's an entertainer, he sings, um, great interpretation. He will be roaming around festival grounds and also be stationed in our new exhibit, the um, Smithsonian's Journey Stories, which is opening, actually just opened last week. Yeah. I, I heard um, that. That's very cool. Yeah. So he'll be there um, doing a little interpretation on journeys of different different groups through Michigan. That's neat. Uh, well, of course, it's, that's really, you know, what, what you do there is you like to interpret all that, so it, it makes sense that uh, right. people can learn about the, the various journeys by water where most of us used to used to travel. Exactly. That's good. Well, it sounds yeah. like you're going to have a, a good time. All on the 4th of July. When does it start? When does it, it end? It starts at 10 a.m. and it goes to 6 p.m. Okay. And there, there, we also do lots of kids' activities, which are also free. Um, we do have some bouncies that cost a little bit of money, but mm-hmm. like a dollar or two, not not too bad. And then one of our biggest hits the last two years has been the cardboard boat regatta. Oh, those are fun. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of the, the communities are doing those these days. So lots of uh, uh, kids' games, uh, main stage performances, crafts, food. Uh, Going to be a good time up there in Alpena, Thunder Bay Marine Sanctuary. And for more information, just go to either thunderbay.noaa.gov or go to alpinacbb.com. Thank you, Gene, and good luck. We're going to find out what's happening in Detroit next here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at michigan.org.